Vampires and humans have always coexisted, but the balance never lasts forever. They eventually wage war on each other for supremacy, but the vampires succeed and make humans their tools. During this war, we see a helpless girl looking at the scene of the murder of the two people that she holds dearest in this world. The girl could only watch as the ruthless vampires devoured her mother and father. She isn't even allowed to scream as that would alert the murderers and the efforts of her parents to hide her and her brother would all fall apart. The helpless girl, now a high school student, still gets nightmares of that horrendous and frightful night, even to this day, so many years in the future. After she snaps out out of the nightmare a bit, one of the students in her class tells her to take some sheets into the music room. As she's wondering why she has to be the one to do it, she sees a vampire feasting on the blood of some schoolgirls and runs away from the scene. The handsome vampire is known as Prince Roy and is very popular among the girls in school. The prince follows the girl and pins her down. Surprised by the fact that she didn't desire him in the slightest and was actually appalled by him, he forces himself upon her. But the girl doesn't accept him as the person who had killed her parents was also a vampire. She tells him to back off and scratches his cheek to bleed. As a result, Roy takes her in front of the whole school and tells everyone that she is his enemy. The girl sighs at her own misery because she is a helpless human and against the authority of the vampires, humans cannot do anything. Roy's announcement instigates the entire school to bully her. She tries to run away from her fate but eventually trips down a staircase, exactly like her life has been going downhill ever since that horrific night. As she faints, she apologizes to her brother Shaolin for not being able to do anything. Roy feels bad for the girl, but his previous experience with a human stops him from stepping in and stopping this madness once and for all. Roy once had a blood servant named Flay. She had promised to stay with him forever, but she just disappeared into thin air one day. Since she broke her promise, Roy thinks that all humans are bad and not trustworthy and deserve everything that's happening to them. Later that night, Roy finds out that the girl had fallen down the stairs and was taken away by some delinquents so that they can rape her. He tries to ignore it all, but once he finds out that it was all Mayase's planning, he steps in and scares the boys off while also telling Mayase to get out of his sight. After saving the poor helpless girl, Roy brings her home and tells his servants to tidy her up and then put her to bed to get some rest. As he's getting out of the room, the campus chairman tells him not to be so flamboyant. He teases him about the fact that he is the one who put her in this situation, and he also played the role of her savior, two completely contradictory behaviors. Roy gets angry with him when he mentions Flay, and leaves the hallway to go take a look at his new pet. However, he is surprised to see that nobody is lying on the bed, and that the girl, whose name is Du Xiaoxin, has escaped through the window. Xiao Xin tries to run away from the mansion at full speed, but she isn't able to execute her escape because some feral crows keep following and bothering her. Roy sees the crows and comes to save her. Amidst the chaos, they both fall down a cliff, but Roy shields her so that she doesn't get hurt. He starts bleeding heavily and tells her to get out of the place as he won't be able to resist the urge to suck her blood, but she refuses to go as she doesn't want to owe a vampire any favors. She openly tells him to suck her blood, but he hugs her from behind and doesn't do it, as he thinks it's much more fun to have her owe him a favor. She gets flustered and tells him to take her home because she isn't feeling well in the woods. The duo walks hand in hand until a comment from Roy pisses her off, and she runs away. After running for a bit, she sees the hallucination of her brother, who tells her that she is now tainted by a vampire and falls unconscious because of the trauma. As she wakes up, she finds herself in the bed once again, with the windows barred this time. Roy comes back to the room and tells her that the woods is famous for making humans hallucinate, especially with things they don't want to see. He asks her to be his blood slave, but she flat out refuses. However, he threatens her that she could accept the offer or her brother will have to do it in her place. Meanwhile, Du Shaolin, her younger brother, comes outside and is really happy as his sister is coming back from school today. Xiaoling only has a few days to live as he has a terminal heart disease. In fact, he is the reason his sister has to go to a vampire-owned school on a scholarship so that she can save up for his treatment. As Xiaoling is going through this existential crisis, a girl comes up to him and tells him the current situation of his sister. 
Xiao Xin is still trying to resist Roy as she refuses to eat anything. He tells her that it's not gonna help her case, but she just wants to go home even if it's just for today. Before he could find out the reason, her brother comes to see him. She tells him that she must not see her brother here as she is still traumatized by the hallucinations in the forest. He finds it amusing and takes her with him to watch what happens to her brother from behind the curtains. Xiaoling comes and begs Roy to release his sister. He tells him that he would take her place if necessary, and that he only wants her security. After talking for a few minutes, Xiaoling falls to the ground and faints from his illness. Roy calls a doctor and has him checked. The doctor tells them to hospitalize him, and as expected, Roy arranges for it all. After seeing that her brother is safe now, Xiao Xin faints from weakness herself. Once she wakes up, Roy once again offers her food and even feeds it to her personally. After eating a bit, she goes to visit her brother and that's when the vampire prince sees that she can actually smile too. He tells her that it's time to go and she quietly comes to him without any drama. The surprised prince inquires about the reason and the girl curtly answers that she is grateful for what he has done for her brother and that she won't run away now. In return, she just wants him not to put a damper on her freedom. Roy finds it interesting and allows it. The next day, she goes to school just as usual as she is getting bullied once again by a few mean girls, and one of the members of the disciplinary committee comes and saves her. The disciplinary committee member tells her that it's okay now. He adds that he knows what's been going on in the school and that she should stay with him if she wants protection from the bullies. He tries to get familiar with her and tells her his name, Senai. Roy sees all this and comes down from the second floor to take Xiao Xin's hand and take her away from the boy. He puts her in the bed and punishes her in rather non-punishing ways. He asserts his authority on her as his master and tells her to take off her clothes. However, after seeing that she is having quite a lot of trouble with that, he tells her that it's not necessary this time, as this is her first offense. However, if she's seen with another man ever again, he won't tolerate it. The next day, Sanaya tries to approach her once again, but she refuses to talk with him. After coming back home, Roy takes her to dance under the moon as practice for a vampire ball that's coming up soon. Xiao Xin starts getting nauseous when she hears about the vampire ball and goes away. Roy's friend teases him about how he is really taking care of his new blood servant, to which he doesn't really have a reply. Xiao Xin is getting anxious about the ball near the fountain where she runs into the campus chairman. The chairman comments how she is similar to Flay with respect to her long hair and throws her into the fountain with a look of disgust on his face. The chairman, who is Roy's brother, tells Xiao Xin about the fact that she is only a replacement for Flay and that she shouldn't have any expectations. He also tells her that Flay betrayed Roy even though he held her in such high regard. Roy, however, comes to the fountain and tells the chairman not to spout any random nonsense that comes to his mind. He takes the frightened girl's hand, offers her a coat, and takes her away. He also tells her not to be too bothered by what the other guy says, and to be careful and try not to run into him at all if possible. The doctor tells her that her brother's condition has suddenly deteriorated and she should rush here if she wants to be by his side. She gets extremely worried and rushes to the gate to go to the hospital. However, the gate is closed for her and she's not allowed to leave without an official permit. She requests the guards a lot, but she's unable to convince them. Sanaya comes there and asks her what's the matter. Once he finds out about Xiaoling, he tells her that even if he is a member of the disciplinary committee, he can't help her. But what can help her is a nobility badge. Sanaya tells her to steal Roy's badge and use it to get out of the school. When Xiao Xin asks him why he's helping her, he tells her that he once had a friend who suffered the terrible fate of dying because she was bullied by the vampires. He doesn't want that scenario to repeat again. She thanks him and goes to Roy. However, she's unable to put her request into words as Roy himself isn't aware of her brother's condition. She then decides to use the nobility badge method. After having a rather easy time stealing it, she runs away with some extra help from Sanai once again and is finally able to get out of the school grounds. After running for a while, she reaches the hospital and sees that Xiao Ling is completely fine. She hugs him by reflex, but starts to wonder that something doesn't add up in all this. Will Roy find out about the nobility badge? Will Xiao Xin ever get rid of the hatred for the vampires? These and many more questions are left for the rest of the episodes to uncover. Finally realizing everything wrong with what she had just done, after seeing that her brother is completely fine and is being perfectly taken care of, 
Xiaoxin falls into a daze and the reality of it all finally settles in. After calming down a bit, she decides to go back and search for the badge that she had just lost while also thinking about how Sinai had used her. On her way back, she runs into Roy on the road, and naturally, he asks her about what she's doing out here and how she even got out of the campus premises in the first place. She goes silent, as she's contemplating whether to tell Roy the truth and face the brunt of his anger, or complicate the situation even more by lying. In the end, she decides to come clean. Roy, seemingly being quite understanding about the situation, orders his servants to go search for the badge and explore the background of Sinai as he is quite suspicious of him. After dealing with all of that, he starts punishing Xiao Xin by pinning her to the tree and sucking her blood. She gets really uncomfortable with it and suggests that she will make it up to him by helping him find the badge because she doesn't want to owe him anything. Roy gets a little impressed with her gesture, but then she faints, owing to the blood loss. She then wakes up in her bed two days later and hastily tries to look for Roy after finding out that they still haven't found the badge and it's already the date of the vampire ball. As she makes her way outside, she comes across Shin, Roy's friend, who offers her a ride to the ball along with a makeover as she wants to protect Roy's status among the nobles. She reluctantly agrees and gets in his car. On Roy's end, he is stopped at the gate of the ball for his badge, but he gets angry at the receptionist for not knowing him, despite him being a candidate for the Council of the Elders the most prestigious place to be for a vampire noble. The others then mock him for having lost his badge. It is at this moment that Shin arrives at the party, and out comes Xiao Xin in her beautiful dress, looking like a queen. The other vampires continue to mock him for losing the badge, and tell him that he has no chance to get into the Council of Elders if he can't even protect his badge. One of them even mockingly asks to vouch for his entry, and they all just laugh at his misery. Roy is then called upon the council to explain his incompetence, to which he replies that it's a plot to threaten his position and status as a candidate for the council. A bald claim of getting the badge back is then made to prove that he is indeed perfectly in control of the situation. On the other end, Xiao Xin spots Sinai at the party and goes to confront him. He tries to play dumb by pretending to not know her and complimenting her looks, but she doesn't even give him any room to breathe with her persistence. So, he drops the act and tells her that now that Roy is well on his way to losing his potential seat on the council, he is pretty useless and she would benefit greatly if she joins him and leaves Roy. She refuses him aptly and just as he is about to get physical with her, Roy comes to the rescue and tells him to keep his hands away from his woman. A council member Leonard also joins the fray and just then, Will, the vampire impersonating Sinai, drops Roy's badge from his pocket. It is at this moment that we get a flashback of Shin and Xiao Xin in the car, where he shows her that he has found Roy's badge and that too from Sinai's room. She tries to defend this case that it was all just a retaliation for what the vampires had done to his family, but Shin quickly shuts her up by telling her that he is a vampire as well and has just transferred here from the northern region. And so he wants her to get close to him and put the badge in his pocket secretly so everyone else can catch him red-handed with the badge. Coming back to the present, Leonard takes him away to present his case in front of the council despite his pleas. On the other hand, Xiao Xin is busy getting flustered as Roy takes her in his arms and completely refutes that she would try to frame Will for anything. Continuing the drama, Will keeps throwing insults at Xiao Xin and by extension at Roy, that he is not qualified for the council the way he protects that woman. Roy replies by mocking him back and that's the cue for Lord Leonard to tell him that he's not even worth presenting to the council for his blunder and orders him to go back to the north as there's no place for him here. The others leave Roy alone too to flirt with his blood servant and that's exactly what he does as he takes her out of the ball near the fountain in the garden and starts slow dancing with her. He tells her that he took her out of the ball because she might be feeling uncomfortable with all those vampires around. Xiao Xin loves that he paid attention to that and applauds him for it, making the young man flustered. She then expresses her concern for Roy and she asks him if others will be targeting him in the future like this recent incident. Roy capitalizes on this chance and gets her to trip up by asking if she's worried about him. The flustered girl on her toes, completely at the mercy of the man holding her, really sets in the mood for a long-awaited kiss. Halfway through the kiss, she feels as if someone is watching her, as if she just detected Mayase getting angry at the scene from afar. Roy then takes her home as he says that the ball is pretty much over already. Seeing all of this unfold from the window on the first floor, Lodor, Roy's brother, and Leonard discuss the recent incident and Leonard tells him that he only got involved in that childish dispute because he was asked by him. On that note, he also applauds the concern he has for his little brother. As a thank you gift, the two seem to share a bond closer than friends, and therefore Lodor leans in to kiss him, and well, probably more later on. Things seem to be heating up on the other end too, as Roy and Chao Xin lie on the bed with Roy just waiting for the green signal. She tries to resist it a bit, but the constant provocation and her own will to not resist at all come through as the two share the bed for the night.
The next day, Xiao Shen wakes up in bed with Roy as he gives her a gentle yo as a morning present. She gets flustered seeing him in bed with her, but he reminds her about last night, while also complaining that she fell asleep in the middle of it and that he didn't actually get to the good part. He then proceeds to pamper her by feeding her from his own hands and telling her that she needs to fatten up a little as her vitality is so low that she can't even survive two bites from a vampire. She remembers the incident and gets flustered, much to Roy's amusement. Then the pair goes to school together with everyone's gazes fixated on them. Avoiding all the gossip surrounding them, Roy casually drops her off at class and tells her to wait for him to go back. The girls in the class also try to get close to her but she refuses their offers to socialize as she knows how shallow they are. A few hours later, Roy once again finds her dozing off somewhere in the balcony and takes her home in a hurry to show her something. As they reach home, he shows her a wardrobe full of pretty clothes and dresses her up in a brand new uniform, telling her that she doesn't need to take any insults from the girls at school. She refuses all of these presents and once again tries to play hard to get, but Roy once again forces her back against the wall and kisses her. He then makes her promise that she will kiss him at least once a day or he will think of a new punishment for her. Still not recovered from all of this, Xiao Xin wakes up the next day to find Lodor by her bedside, grinning and laughing over how she is being pampered by his brother. Lodor continues his verbal assault on the poor girl as he tells her that she is nothing more than a substitute for Flay, Roy's last blood servant. This upsets the girl quite a lot and she goes in a daze thinking that it all may have been just a misunderstanding on her part while Roy was only thinking about his previous servant. After Lodor leaves the room, Roy enters and tries to get close to Xiao Xin, but the girl had other plans as she asks him directly if she is a replacement for Flay. This makes him angry and he disappears from the room after angrily pushing her down. Ignoring her for the next few days, Roy doesn't make contact with her at all, and even when the two come across, words just don't come out of the girl's mouth, as she is unsure of herself why she is even thinking about making up with him in the first place. All in all, she receives a letter that appears to be from Roy, but she realizes that it's fake. However, still clinging to the faint hope that it might actually be from him, she goes to the place mentioned in the letter, but instead of Roy, she meets the bully girls from her class, and they mock her and then tie her to an iron bar with a handcuff. She then senses the presence of a person after waiting for a while and immediately thinks that it's Roy but it turns out to be Mayase who adds even more salt to the wound as she dunks on her and sucks a lot of her blood. However, before she could finish the job, a mysterious man with a silver dagger comes to the rescue and just as he is about to free her from the handcuffs, Roy and Shin come to the scene and that's when he makes his escape. In the end, we can see Roy holding Xiao Xin in his arms gently while he wishes for her survival. The injured Chao Xin is taken to the hospital by Roy to be treated after losing a large amount of blood, but her situation is stable as she sleeps in the hospital bed with her master watching over her. Shin enters the room, advising Roy to rest as the doctor already told him that the girl is out of danger, though he ignores that and inquires about Mesa's status. Shin tells him that she had confessed to sucking the girl's blood, but was interrupted by none other than the man in black, and the weapon that the man used raised quite a lot of suspicion as it was a silver dagger. Back at the hospital, it's the next day. It seems that Xiao Xin has completely recovered as she asks her master to let her leave and get some fresh air. Though all things considered, he doesn't let her go alone and hence the two head out holding hands after barring Xin from following them. The lone Xin wonders if he should visit Du Xiaoling for some fun. Meanwhile, outside, the pair enjoys the fresh air, though Xiao Xin is worried as she hasn't told her little brother that she's in the hospital. Roy tells her to think of no man but him. After that, the two head out for a meal. On their way to the restaurant, a poor human boy, in his ignorance, grabs onto the vampire's clothes, asking him for food. Worried about the child's safety, Xiao Xin grabs her master's hand and rushes him to the restaurant. After they're there, she sees him asking the manager for something while pointing at the poor child, and her worries are washed away when he sees the manager giving the child food, as Roy asks them, surprising her that he would save a human child. Soon, the little date ends, and Roy drops her home before heading out for work. Alone with Shin, he knows exactly what she's thinking, and tells her how he is a half-human and half-vampire, so she shouldn't worry because Roy doesn't discriminate. He goes on to ask her if she wants to hear about her master's past. Her mind immediately goes back to what Lador had said to her, about being just a replacement for Roy's former blood servant, Flay, and ever since she has felt the anxiety of being just a replacement. But all this curiosity is crushed when Shin laughingly mentions that it would be better if she heard it from Roy directly instead of him, so she should head to bed for today and rest. Once in bed, she continues thinking about what he has said and expresses how much she had wished to know about her master's past at that moment, but she also wants it to come from Roy himself and not someone else. As she acts frustrated, 
her master appears on the bed surprising her. He explains that he had come back for something. They continue making jokes and the master is happy seeing his dear Xiao Xin smile like never before. He continues to punish her for laughing at him by kissing her on the lips and pinning her down. He smugly explains that they had missed their one kiss every day promise, so they have to make it up somehow. The two hold each other in embrace, with their lips tied. She wonders about her past with her master, since from when they first met, he was ruthless and deplorable, whereas now, he seems almost humane to her. She wonders which one of the two is the real one, and what is she to him? Does she even matter? Though for tonight, she doesn't let these thoughts bother her too much, as the two embrace one another with their hands interlocked. A few days pass, Xiao Xin is still at the hospital, but she's with Xin since her master is busy with some work. Although she's completely healed, so she wants to leave the hospital since her exams are coming soon. Thus, being a student on scholarship, she can't take the risk of missing an exam. After getting permission from Roy, she heads to school, although she has to be with Xin whenever she's on campus as instructed by her master. As she walks with Shin through the school ground, students continue to gossip about her saying things like how she's quick on switching masters. But those students are quickly silenced by the half-vampire, as he realizes that this is the reason Roy asks them to escort the girl. He manages to let it out that Roy is working on blood hunters, which makes the girl curious about what that is. He avoids her question. After that, she heads to the examination hall to sit for the exams. She thinks about how her master is paying for all the medical expenses of her brother, so she can't allow herself to skip the exam and lose her scholarship because one way or another, she has to repay her debt to her master whenever possible. A girl beside her suddenly lifts her hand, calling for the teacher, and reports that Chao Xin is cheating. The girl is stressed hearing this, and to her surprise, there is a cheat in her study table. She tries to explain herself to the teacher, but she pays her no mind. Just when things seem to be taking the worst possible direction, Roy suddenly appears. The teacher is unable to utter another word at the vampire noble. Looking at her in distress, he decides that he needs to show everyone something that will protect Chao Xin in the future. Hence, he heads on to the same balcony where he had asked the whole school to bully her and declares to everyone that Chao Xin is his blood servant as he puts his hand around her shoulder. She realizes that he is doing this to protect her. She tells him that this is against the norms, but he smiles and replies that there is always someone breaking those. Many figures, enemies and friends alike, witness the scene from the crowd. 